What's going on everybody? Eric Helms here, Chief Science Officer of 3D Muscle Journey. Today I'm introducing a video on blood flow restriction training, or BFR. Specifically, what it is, how it works, and how you can use light loads to actually gain strength and muscle mass. And this is a video from our free online course, which you can find in the link below, uh, that is specifically about blood flow restriction training. Now, for those new to the channel, 3D Muscle Journey is all about helping athletes figure out how to sustain their performance long term, how to have long careers, whether they are competitive or non-competitive strength or physique athletes. And that includes rough patches where they might get injured or need to recover from injury or train around some issue. So while we don't use BFR training in our programming regularly, when we do use it, it's an invaluable tool. So I want to help you understand how to use this specific tool and understand how it works. And in service of that, we have our injury reduction and management specialist, Dr. Nicholas Licamelli, who's a practicing doctor of physical therapy, and he has a lot of clinical experience. And in this video, which is just a snippet from the full course, he's gonna be going over the skeletal muscle physiology of how blood flow restriction training works, how you can actually adapt it for use in the gym, and the X's and O's of programming BFR for both strength and hypertrophy. So, Again, this BFR course is two hours long, so you're only watching a small snippet from it. So if you're interested and you wanna sign up for this free course and have access forever, just click the link below and you can sign up, get access to it, and you can view it at your leisure. So again, I hope you enjoy this snippet. I hope you learned something. Enjoy, and I'll see you in the course. So the purpose of today, like we said, is to provide a general overview of BFR and then offer some practical applications for strength and physique sport athletes, which is why we're here, right? So I wanna start by understanding the difference between principles and methods. And a great quote is, methods are many, principles are few. Methods change, but principles never do. What a principle is, is something that is unchanging. It exists whether we like to believe it or not. If we put a screw into a piece of wood, if we turn that screw to the right, it is going to go in to the wood. If we turn it to the left, it's going to come out of the wood. That is a principle. Can't argue that. The methods are everything we do after that. So if I can if I'm building something, I can build a birdhouse, I can build a picture frame, I can build a wooden car, no matter what I build, if I move, if I turn that screw to the right, it's going to go in. If I turn it to the left, it's going to come out. And it's critical, critical that we focus on principles rather than methods, okay? Blood flow restriction training is a method of training. It is not a principle, it's a method of training, okay? So we have to just make sure, yes, this whole presentation is on BFR and it's going to highlight a lot, a lot of the good things about it, but we have to always check ourselves and make sure that we're not getting wrapped up in a method. And of course, if this, if this model here is unfamiliar to you, definitely uh, dive into this after seeing it here. This, this is the muscle and strength pyramid by Dr. Eric Helms, who I'm sure you all know. And it just really gives us the order of importance here uh, along the, the same lines as the principles and methods. We want to make sure that when we're talking about training, we are focusing on the most important things, like putting, getting, taking care of the big rocks first before sprinkling things in like, like BFR. And BFR is definitely not a big rock. It is something you can add into your training once the other foundational things have been in place. That being said, blood flow restriction is not a fad or not some kind of hack. It's based off of principles of muscular adaptation, which we will get into later. It, it could supplement, but not replace traditional training. Right? This isn't something that's going to be a game changer and change the way that everyone works out in, in the next couple of years. Right? We're basically creating a need for an energy system adaptation in a hypoxic environment using less load and less reps. So all of those things are principles of, of training. They happen with or without BFR. BFR just 
does that with less load and less reps. But we'll get into more of that. So why should we consider using BFR? Well, if you're unable to tolerate the loads necessary for strength and hypertrophy, which we'll get into, and uh, if the goal is to train uh, metabolic or oxidative stress um, and increase exposure to fatigue, and we'll get into what all that means as well. But those are two general times when someone may want to consider using uh, blood flow restriction training. So BFR can be used as a bridge to heavy training. It, it, it sort of helps prepare the body for working hard. So putting in the work, recovering, and repeating. Okay, so it's kind of like an introduction to heavier training. Perhaps someone isn't doesn't have much training experience and they have never felt a muscle burn or muscle fatigue, or they've never worked to muscle failure, probably not the best thing to throw them under a loaded barbell to experience that muscle burn and fatigue for the first time. We can use lighter loads, strap on some cuffs, and they can experience that discomfort. Let the repeated bout effect take place, right? The more we do something, the better we adapt to it. Uh, and then it can, like we said, it can kind of be a bridge to heavier loading. Very, very important slide here. Remember that the decision to use BFR or anything for that matter should always be based on the pillars of evidence-based practice. And this is from Eric Mira and it, it shows this as a funnel and all of these things kind of come together to decide whether or not you're going to use um, some sort of, of method or modality, okay? So we always have to make sure that we're paying attention to this. So how can we talk about blood flow restriction training without first reviewing how blood flows through the body? Is here it is kind of a, an image of the arteries and veins and the circulatory system of the human body. We should, let's start with oxygenated blood in the heart. Okay. The heart pumps, gives a nice strong pump. All that oxygen rich blood gets shot out the arteries. Okay. The arteries are shown in red here in this image. They get shot out the arteries and they travel down into the limbs. As it gets further and further away from the heart, the arteries get smaller and smaller as they kind of branch out. They get so small at the, uh, at the end that it, they actually merge with the veins here, right? So this is an artery, and then it branches off, gets smaller and smaller, and then it goes right into the veins. These connections here are so, so small that the oxygen, the nutrients, all of those things that the blood is carrying gets transported over those membranes into the working cells, right? So we use muscle for this discussion. So the muscles get fed all of those, all of that oxygen, all of those nutrients. So the blood um, gets picked up by the veins, which is now pretty much useless blood because there's no oxygen in it and there's no nutrients in it because it was all taken up by the muscle. Once that deoxygenated, deoxygenated blood gets into the veins, it travels back up to the heart and gets dumped into the heart. Okay. Then it gets reoxygenated from air from our lungs. And then after that, after that blood gets reoxygenated, it gets pumped out through the heart once again through the same mechanism. So what we're doing with blood flow restriction training is we're partially occluding arterial flow and we're uh, completely occluding venous flow. So like we said, the arterial flow has much more velocity. Think of like uh, an old war movie where someone gets uh, an injury and there's like blood squirting out, um, you know, with, uh, with force, that would be an example of when an artery was ruptured, right? That force from the heart shoots that blood through those arteries. That same force 
uh, gets less and less and less as the blood travels through the system because that's the only thing it has. The muscles will help pump that blood back to the heart from the veins, um, but that initial push is really all that it has to, to go by. So the, the velocity of that blood is much slower in the veins than it is in the arteries. So this is an example of, like we just said, how the muscles can act as pumps to pump that blood uh, back up to the heart. Now, when we are contracting our muscles uh, under normal training, our muscles do this. Our muscles uh, occlude our veins. So just like blood flow restriction training is going to occlude venous return, that happens to a certain extent whether or not we use BFR or not, okay? In this first picture here, you could see that the muscles are contracting around those veins and it's occluding that flow. And then to the right here, the muscles are relaxed so the veins can now return that blood to the heart. That's important to remember because like we said, BFR is not some kind of new uh, hack that that is this new shiny object right all it is is using the same principles that our bodies already do and this is very important when we when we talk about metabolic stress training and oxidative training okay but we'll get into that this is just another way to kind of explain this this is the model of a heart a heart a house and um how the heating system would work, right? So you have this, this furnace down here and it's boiling that water and the water is getting really hot. And that's kind of like the heart. Basically the hot steam is going to go up to the radiators. It's going to go through the coils of the radiators while it's there. It's going to let off that heat, let off that energy to heat the room, right? That is the same thing as when the blood travels through the arteries, meets the veins, and gives off that oxygen and nutrients. That water, that steam that now doesn't have heat to it because it gave it off, is going to trickle back through the system, through other, uh, other pipes here, and go back into the furnace to get reheated. That would be like the venous return, okay? So the water stays the same, right? The water itself just gets heated, gets pumped out, gives off its heat, comes back, gets heated, gets pumped out, gives off its heat, and then comes back, right? That is basically the idea of how the circulatory system works.